Welcome to Fast Pace, the new growth leadership and management podcast featuring Josh Vegan and Dean Mackey. We wanted to peel back the layers on what happens in the world of fast-paced real estate agencies, from new leadership models to the management challenges we all face each day. This is about a new era in the estate agency sector. Rapid changes to business models, service lines, remuneration, and growth present the greatest opportunities that we've ever seen. Sit back, get inspired, grow your skills, and reimagine what's possible with Fast Pace. Every Friday, wherever you get your podcasts, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Josh Vegan Digital. Strategy is really important inside of any business. And one of the great conversations is about understanding the difference between a hub and a spoke. Now, Dean, I, I think about this a lot because sometimes you find a really good practitioner who's in what we go to call a spoke market. You know, that they, they can do that little market really well, but they, they never really get to the prestigious suburb or to the next one that they could go to. Whereas yet you see other businesses that are located in what we go to call the hub. And when they're located in that hub, they just seem to be able to work in every market. Now, Dean, I know the uh, Double Bay market pretty well. And the interesting conversation is it seems like a Double Bay agent can list in Point Piper and also do Bondi and do Rose Bay and Bellevue Hill and all these other suburbs. But yet an agent who's actually got an office just in Bondi is very rarely going to get out of that Bondi bubble. And it's kind of an interesting conversation about the difference between what makes a hub market, what makes a spoke market, um, when does it call to actually have an office in a spoke and when is it just okay to have an office in the hub and what should your preference be? So Dean, this is really interesting about um, beyond office location, starting to really think about those marketplaces that are aspirational and, and why they're an important part. Now, Dean, you've been involved in, in building a very significant business. You've, you've really got that going very quickly. Tell us a little bit about the conversation between hub and spokes and what your thoughts are on, on where office placement is and why that's important to unlocking bigger and better markets. Thanks, Josh. I think... Um when it comes to this conversation, there's swings and roundabouts, right? Like, um, there's no hard and fast rules, so please, um, you know, perhaps take take it with a grain of salt. But I, I understand the concept. But it's and, and I've I've worked in and been part of businesses that um, you know have really uh, um, worked hard at understanding this particular concept. And and having a hub, having a hub, I've found can um, have a significantly beneficial impact upon. Um, your profit margins and your ability to, to um, not have to carry so much infrastructure, it, it can actually mean that if you're, if you're, if you're running multiple offices, is what, is what I'm referring to here. Mm. So um, it's a super office. Yeah, it's right? so, so like a super office where you can actually get in and, 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 you know, there's a number of offices around in different regions and I ran a number of them. So, for example, in the Long North Shore, we, we decided to make um, Neutral Bay a hub and that particular hub serviced, you know, uh, up, up to 20 suburbs at one point, right? So yeah. so it wasn't about have, having to necessarily have carry infrastructure into um, sort of spoke markets, which I'll come to in a minute, mm. but it was it was about, and, and we, to be honest with you, we still had agents who were number one in their marketplace, but they weren't necessarily in the uh, in the spoke market. Mm-hmm. There were agents who had smaller offices in those spokes, mm-hmm. but they weren't the high performing of the number one office. So it's interesting to know that you can be, and if you think about it and you go across our industry, you can actually think about, as it comes to mind, quite a lot of agents who are number one in, 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 um, in sort of spoke markets, mm-hmm. but they, you know, they don't have an office or infrastructure structure there. So, so I think the issue we've had as an industry is we've come from a model mm. that has historically been spoke. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a little mum and dad sort of office in um, multiple suburbs on, on every corner, right? And so so that's sort of where we've come from. But if you think about it, so the milk bar was once, once like that too, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I live in Paddo and um, I had a milk bar in my corner. I loved it. It was really close. And I'd wander in there once every month because I loved it. it was ever, I'd forgotten the milk or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he charged me a fortune for it, but I never went there for anything else. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and I wondered how he's actually surviving, to be honest with you. And he's gone now, right? Mm-hmm. So so now I'm have to, I have to walk three or four blocks and I walk into a Maloney's now and it's a, it's sort of up in Wallara and it's it's further for me, but it's a it's a big sort of convenience store that's sort of come convenience, come supermarket. Market, really, right? It's got everything in my supermarket's got, but on a smaller scale. And I think the whole, it's not just our industry, but, but you know, I think we've, everyone's had to get smarter around how we do things. And so, um, if we take that concept of saying, well, you know, a, a, a hub is, in my view, it's a central location. It's a primary market that is well established. It's thriving. It's got high density, uh, lots of activity. It's yeah. got infrastructure. It's got infrastructure, right? So, so for me, if you want to think about it, if if it, it's got high vis, uh, you know, it typically, you know, in in fringe markets or spoke markets, often uh, the infrastructure is a lot smaller too. So there'll be smaller yeah. offices, maybe eighty square meters or whatever. But you know, in 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 hubs, uh, typically they lend themselves to a bit in bigger infrastructure, so you can actually find bigger spaces, right? So if you're smart around that, you can create a hub and 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 create further reach because, um, you know. 
But if 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 you're able to do that, you know, you can achieve market share uh, on a much broader scale beyond that that particular s- uh, suburb. So, so I, I think t- I tend to think like if there's like a Westfield shopping centre or something like large like that, that's probably giving you the indication of that's where the hub is. Yeah, and that then off the back of that, then the little spokes like these little fringe ones, but it's still important markets. It's not always the case. You know, like, like Josh, you know, like if you go and see, as I say, the inner west of Sydney or whatever, and you, you, you go down Leichhardt there, McGrath have got a hub. They've mm-hmm. got a hub, right? And that's been there for a long time. Mm-hmm. And they've maintained that strategy in that market for quite a, quite a significant amount of time. And so, so you know, they, they, they definitely initially started out with a very hub Strategy I mean, orientation, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it has diff- it has changed um, as they've moved into franchise, mm. um, but you know, so so let's talk a little bit about fringe markets. I mean, fringe markets or spokes are, are sort of adjacent or secondary type markets, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, certainly, and and I think what the point is here, you, you've got to understand what are key markets and what aren't. Yeah, um, you've got to understand and and what are the trends, what are the emerging trends, and what's happening in certain suburbs, and what's the market size, what's the population, what are the demographics. Or, all of those things um, and the market market dynamics, you know, what's demand like, what's infrastructure like. So, so you, I think what you've got to do, you've got to get a really good handle on that stuff. Yeah. And then you, 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 it'll become really clear on a map when, with all that information around what's a hub and what's a spoke. Yeah. Um, and so, so those 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 spoke or fringe markets are really often. I find they're untapped because there might not be anyone in them. It might be because it's not worth someone being in them. But you could actually easily target it. I, I see the spoke markets as areas that give you potential for growth, um, but typically they're a bit lower turnover or there's lower demand there. So it doesn't really warrant you to necessarily go and put infrastructure in, right? Um, but it might have a specific need. So. So what I've learned over the years is how do you balance the needs between the infrastructure that you need to put in place um, and, and 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 or not? Because you know what I mean. If if I've, I've actually, Josh, you said I've we've grown quickly. I've actually inherited um, as I've gone through a merger and acquisition process. When you go in and you do a merge or whatever, sometimes you do inherit as part of that leases that. I've identified are in fringe markets, and I'm thinking, why would you actually put an office in this particular market? You don't actually need that that to be there, right? Like, so, so, so you got to wind, wind out of that learned history or that infrastructure over time. Totally. Like, yeah. like I, I picked, uh, we had a, had a, had an office that was, had a, had a, a, a decent amount of rent, decent, um, fit out. And we only had a couple of agents in it. And every day long, I'm looking at it going, this doesn't make any sense. It's a market where people pass through, doesn't have, you know, and I look only a suburb or two away and there's a hub, right? I'm like, why, 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 did, why have you opened over here on a fringe? And I think that some people go into, this real estate space going into these spoke markets, possibly accepting that that's all I really want to ever focus on. And it, might, and it might suit an agency with one or two agents that only really want to focus on that immediate market. But if you're looking to grow a, a larger business and to grow your business, I think you've got to take this headspace of identifying what is a hub and what's a spoke and which one is going to make more sense. And so so my attitude is, is to be honest with you, as we've been moving down this pathway of, especially you know since COVID, it's even emphasized that more, we've got a lot more people not working in the office as much, you know, using the office more of a, as, a, as a communication center, more of a sort of Formula One pit stop type vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and, and you know, the fact is you do mostly stuff on the phone these days and everything else. So I, I look at it and go, I prefer to set up really strong hubs and, and turn them into activity-based workspaces. So what does it mean? It means spaces where you can come in and you can use multiple different spaces for different purposes, but you're not plonking yourself at one desk all day because you don't need to anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and most of our agents are only in the office sort of 40% of the time anyway, sometimes less depending upon yeah. the way that they operate. So I'm thinking more and more about, you know, hubs, larger infrastructure, but less of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and ultimately, like I, I, I'm actually questioning the, the longevity of – of infrastructure anyway, because, you know, margins are getting tighter and and, and pe- the way people are working are different. And I think we as agencies need to respond to that. You know, the interesting conversation is too, is that, you know, every different site that you open, um, it tends to weaken culture unless you're really clear about what actually True. drives culture. True. So what I love about a big hub is that like the chance for you and I to walk the sales floor and, and walk the property management floor and say hello to people and have those conversations is so much greater. When all of a sudden, if we're having to go out just a 25 minute drive to that little spoke one, yeah. uh, people don't turn up. Well, it's complexity. It's, it's also complexity. Yeah. You, know, you have to duplicate so many things and take on, on on a whole bunch of overheads. But the culture piece is exactly what you. you know, it's almost like you've got the more the more infrastructure you have, 
and in those spoke markets, they end up having their own little subculture. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got to have resources to go out and make sure that everybody's aligned and your people are communicating. And it does make it harder. So I'm thinking, you know, hubs, hubs are great. If you think about them as communication centers for people to be aligned and on the same page and, and people want energy and they want all that. And if they're doing, spending half their time in the car or in people's lounge rooms or working from home, when they come in, they want energy and vibe. Yeah. You know, in my experience, when I get around to our network and I turn up to an office and I roll in, there's one or two people in there and it's flat, right? I'm like, geez, this is, you know. So so my learning is I think that um, it, while, while, I, while I spoke, sometimes is it makes sense because it serves a specific purpose, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, and, and it may get you access to markets you might not otherwise. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking more and more hubs are the way to go. And, you know, your, your example of Double Bay – Getting into Bondi, I, I can see that um, for sure. Um, that said, I mean, Bondi, you know, if you wanted to think about it, yeah, you do get stuck in the Bondi bubble for probably very good reason. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a pretty big addressable market on its own, right? Yeah. Um, and, there's, and there's no doubt that you could definitely run a hub out of there. Yeah. The difference is about the mindset, about like literally how you do brand and what you do in the digital world and how you make those things happen. And one of the things I actually saw over in London, which is pretty interesting, is that they've actually set up all of these different website um, locations where you go when you type in a suburb and it takes you to their website but yet they actually don't have a physical office there. But if you're like, you're typing in the brand name, then all of a sudden, bang, you're landing well, on the landing page. of course. I mean, these days, most of uh, our, our, our buyers and sellers are doing their research digitally, right? They don't really care where your office was. There was once upon a time, you know, and, and again, in some regional markets, it's quite different. There's people who, you know, having a shop front, you know, and still having the, all the photos in the windows and, and it, because they get someone to come in from a, uh, a metro center and they walk up and down the street, they look at all the photos and they come in and say, can you show it to me, right? Yeah. Um, they're not necessarily doing the digital research the way you may be in a major metro area. So I think, you know, you've got to sort of take this, that's why I said with grain of salt it's not uh, these don't apply everywhere um but i certainly understand it from a major metro perspective i, I used to remember my uh, the, the solicitor i used to use in aubrey uh, he, he was there every day of the week but he used to go out to his coal can office on a friday afternoon between one o'clock and three o'clock and that would be all of the old farmers would come in and see him and there's a lot of money in those farming communities and they'd then go and do all of their deals in aubrey but he would go and see them just for that two or three hours and that's a great example of a big big hub and a little spoke well that's right. Visit, right and there are other regions too josh like oh, we're now pushing into parts of you know outside of sydney and and, and we're we've been going through this this exact conversation around the area between cronulla and wollongong right like we, mm. you know, there are a number of quite spoke markets there but, yeah, yeah. but but where in fact would be a hub and so we th- we think we've identified how we would how we'd address that market taking a hub approach yeah amazing mm. the most important thing go and reimagine your footprint if you're going to start today where would you go what are the big markets you could actually go after and how could you actually really think about being able to drive culture so maybe some bigger hubs and the appropriate spokes because there's some really lucrative smaller markets that could actually bolt on to your existing operation 